next let's talk about the next very important uh, nitrogen fixing microbial inoculant that is azetobacter ter should not be treated less important than rhizobia the azetobacter it fixes the nitrogen for non leguminous plant uh, like our cereals wheat rice millets and also for a lot of vegetables cotton so as a azetobacter tries to provide nitrogen to these plants of course the nitrogen is not of that extent as it is fixed by uh, rhizobium but it is quite important and it is performing several other functions in the uh, in the soil like it produces lot of slime so it uh, it makes it possible soil uh, uh, soil aggregation it helps in soil aggregation it produces lot of growth hormones so it helps the plant in in a better growth then it also has uh, it produces lot of it pro uh, protects the plant from uh, diseases also apart from other benefits so it is quite important to know as a top factor also then another important question which comes is that can azetobacter supply all nitrogen required by the plant by the crop plants and answer to this is no nitrogen cannot supply the required uh, required nitrogen by the plant it just leads to an increase in 8 to 10% of the wheat crop and we need to have extra nitrogen supplied as a chemical fertilizer of course you know a lot of new strains are being developed like the one developed by the scientists at irri uh, bageshwar et al 2017 and i have just attached the link at the comments box which will be referred they have produced a new strain which could reduce the urea application in the field with azotobacter to up to 85 kg per kg urea per hectare so azotobacter is very important for non leguminous crops right so before you know we uh, use azotobacter as a bio fertilizer we must know how to isolate this and how to under identify and characterize that the strain which we are studying is azotobacter isolation of azotobacter is done and two with the help of two very common and popular medium one is hb medium and the other is jensen's medium they produce typical colonies which are typically flat white milky mucoid colonies and they produce slime in the colonies also their cells in the beginning the cells in the beginning are motile so they pass the motility test also when you know we try to characterize them according to the burgess manual this also is an important character then apart from this they are gram negative like rhizobium so they will give that test also negative apart from this they they are some more features like slime produce production of slime they they shape and morphology varies from medium to medium like in certain media these preparations are at hb medium where they are producing different colors in the their colony so their their color production but this color production apart from medium it also varies from strain to strain then several biochemical tests which can be performed with them uh, these include the indole test the sucrose test glucose test and of this they show positive indole test with a different color ring in the 
in the Erickson mixture and the sucrose test also they show positive glucose test and if we see that in a table we will be able to see that they, they produce certain tests, few tests positive and few tests negative and that goes with the Burgess manual and with that we can easily identify them that the human strain is, is azotobacter and again like any microorganism if you want to identify them through species level or any particular strain level we have different molecular methods especially 16S rRNA sequences if we go for that we'll be able to identify them uh, to the species level but for a for a uh, soil microbiologists who want to go for mass production of a particular strain to identify the strain at the colony or morphology level is also quite important. So with this one, I finish the talk about azotobacter and if you have any questions, you can write at the bottom in the comments or you can ask me here at the comments box. I will be very glad to answer your questions.